Everybody, yes, it's us. <laughs> Welcome to Sunrise Daily today. I'm Chamberlain Uso. Good morning. It's great to be back to the grind. Welcome to the program. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Indeed, it's good to be back. Good morning and welcome. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Someone else said back to the trenches, but no. <laughs> good to be back to regular programming. Welcome to Sunrise Daily from here in Lagos. I'm Kayode Okikielu. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, what a time it's been for everybody, actually, from the electorate, uh, the commission themselves, who were sure um, a thing or two going through their heads, and to the contestants themselves. But, yes, indeed, we're all looking forward to the next round of elections. But um, it is incredibly important for everyone to know that uh, the, the process is not concluded yet. And uh, interestingly, whilst you had so many people who were of the opinion that you were not going to see a lot of young people come out or participate this time out, many of them, uh, frankly, also admitted to us that, yes, they've been proved wrong. So, um, and part of the stories we hear about young people thrashing their voter cards, not happy with the process, you don't necessarily have to do that because... Um, the process is still on. You still have one more round of elections. You still need to go out there and get your voices heard, while several other people are calling for a holistic audit of what transpired, such that, because they say, look, this is about the system. And no matter what happens, it is bigger than an individual. The country is there. Everyone has equal rights. Everyone's got one vote. Everyone has a say in the country because we are all in this together. So they just like to reach out to all of those young people, even in the speech or several speeches, you have heard them appeal to a lot of young people to also, uh, because look, no matter what happens, they are the ones who will occupy those positions tomorrow. They need to stand the heat and not get out of the kitchen and ensure that some of those things are done. Because look, even if you go back and look at it, if they've been there this long, you need to equally ensure that uh, you uh, do what you have to do. It's not exact. It's never going to be a roller coaster ride. It is never going to be easy because, look, you know what they say nothing good comes easy. You have to just stay in there and ensure that you get your voices heard. So, yes, one more round of elections will go on, and um, much as it might have left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouth, but process is still on. It's still about you because they are all there to serve you. You have the final say. You should determine what goes on or what plays out at the end of the day. But those are part of the things we'll go ahead and take a look at on the program today. Indeed, Chamberlain, still a lot to, I mean, a lot of lessons to be learned. I'm sure that even young people who participated for the very first time um, in these elections will well, it has not come out how they expected. It hasn't come out how a lot of people, how a lot of people expected. I, I mean, INEC promising that, you know, the beavers will be able to take pictures from yeah. the polling unit, which was supposed to be a major game changer, that you take pictures at the polling unit and immediately it is reflecting on an INEC server so that regardless of whatever happens at collation, if you have the patience to be able to download all that happened in 176,606 polling units, you should be able to get a clear picture of what actually transpired yeah. um, uh, at the collation center and even till the final collation, uh, which we finally saw at the National Collation Center. But that didn't transpire, and a lot of Nigerians are sore about that, which is, uh, you know, which is totally valid, totally, totally valid. Uh, but as you said, you know, democracy is the long haul. It's not, uh, it's not uh, you know, you don't get it this time, so you go back or you destroy a voter card or you give up or you say Jackba is the way to go. That certainly is not the way to go. That, for me, I believe that, you know, the, even the democracy which we currently enjoy was fought for. Uh, and the, the reforms that we've seen brought into the system, they were all fought for. They were fought for through engagement, uh, through activism, through, um, you know, in some instances, even protests. 
so I'm, I'm hoping that you, much as a lot of people are woke up to getting their voter card and this is their first civic engagement with the state, I'm hoping that that also continues. Because even after that, because part of what also happens is that even in, after the process, even if the process were to work, even assuming all of this panned out, Mm -hmm. How we wanted, um, how INEC had promised, and there was transparency in the pro in the pro in the process. Eventually, of course, one person will emerge. I hope we did not think that at the end of the day, you know, that that's where the work stops. The work doesn't stop there. The work actually is supposed to start after one person has emerged. That is when you actually get the engagement, the freedoms that, the, that you are able to exercise that comes with a democracy. That's where you actually get full expression of it, that a government doesn't just does what it wants to do, yeah. but in the four years that it has been given to work, it is actually engaging with the Nigerian people, and the Nigerian people are engaged. So I don't think that people should give up just yet and think, oh, look, that's it. Whilst um, you know, the candidates pursue through legal means whatever it is that has, been, has not been done right at the end of the day, um, you know, citizens also have a duty to constantly engage uh, with the democratic process by engaging those they have elected to represent them. That is extremely important, Jimmy. Yeah. Yes, indeed, Mark, where you're right on the money on yeah. all the points raised, especially, you know, the functionality of the BVAS and, you know, the uh, constitutional requirement, according to the Electoral Act, as amended, that uh, mandates INEC to upload results from the polling unit to the IREV. Uh, which is, has become a matter of debate now you know, between uh, lawmakers. Some are saying that uh, that portion of the Electoral Act only mandates INEC to upload results after all its administrative processes have been concluded. But then again, the others are saying no. What the Electoral Act says is that the results should be uploaded from the polling unit. And as you, you know, observed rightly, Maupe, it is indeed you know, a ground for Nigerians to be aggrieved. But then again, uh, democracy... Uh, is, is sacrosanct, the sanctity of our democracy is sac sacrosanct at this point in time. The nation is bigger than the individual, and so candidates who have grievances must approach the courts to express their grievances. And how the court determines that, we'll see only in a matter of time. But then again, uh, you know, one must be glad at this point in time at the, uh, you know, body language and in, in, indeed, you know, the expression of the president-elect calling on all candidates to come together at this point in time and build Nigeria together. Of course, the other candidates will have their time, you know, um, perhaps not now, maybe in the future. It's been a long and, um, you know, hard fought and won uh, elections. Uh, a lot of money has gone into it both from the government and from the international community. So at this point in time, I, I doubt that Nigerians have that threshold from within, the mental threshold, given all of these challenges, to go through this process all over again. Indeed not. The Naira scarcity is still another matter that Nigerians are contending with at this point in time. So uh, perhaps it, this is the time to reflect on the lessons you know, of the just concluded elections and move forward. Kayadi. Uh, I, I know that I mean, different people, people operate differently, people handle things differently. And I, I think it's important to recognize uh, the peculiarities of people, honestly. As you said, uh, everybody has their rights, but everybody's different. So uh, asking people to move on uh, should also be predicated on uh, some fundamentals. Uh, have they been heard? Have their, the cases they have raised, has it been heard? Have they gotten uh, some response at least that shows that, well, we hear you and um, we're, we're taking a look at your request? I think that, that will make moving on much easier. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be difficult to just tell people, move on, move on, move on, when they've not gotten some sort of closure. In fact, getting some sort of closure response helps uh, in the moving on process. And when I say move on, there are lots of options to move on to. And I think that's also the beauty, um, as you said, of this whole process. So moving on doesn't necessarily mean hey, abandon the struggle, as it were. There are other means to actually pursue uh, that struggle, and I'm hoping that uh, all of the parties involved can explore all of those options, whichever works for them, uh, in the constitution that is constitutionally 
and then follow through with it. It reminds me, perhaps loosely, uh, of you know true football fans, how they stay true to their clubs. You know, Chimelin talking about uh, some people thinking or maybe almost thrashing their PVCs just reminds me of those football fans. You know, their team loses, and yes, it hurts. Yes, they tear up. You see them in this in the stadium. They're crying. They're wailing. But the next day, they're back at the stadium cheering their club because they believe in that club. Some of them have affiliations with the club from generations. It's something that they pass from generation to generation. So just imagine uh, the case of the love we should have for our nation, Nigeria. I believe it should even supersede the love a lot of people have for their football club. So, I mean, it's, it might be a loose uh, comparison, but it still comes to bear on how we should see our nation, how we should stay invested in this nation. Yes, lots of challenges. A lot of people are asking, now that this election is over, can we now have the notes, the Naira notes? But uh, clearly that isn't the case for a lot of people. Even for me right now, I can't remember when last I saw the new Naira notes, really. And it's quite challenging for business people, petty traders who can't do transfers. In fact, when you want to do transfers to them, even when they want to accept it, it takes a long time. Sometimes it doesn't even go through. And you just wonder, for those people, how much more can they take? So, yes, it's important for people to move on, but have they gotten closure? Uh, their issues, their challenges, have they been attended to? That is something we should also talk about. Mark and Chamberlain. Well, yes, indeed. So uh, we'll just hope and wait and see how all of these things play out. Uh, but. Uh, we'll still have one more round of elections to go, so we'll uh, keep focused and keep prepping for that because we will be here to ensure that you get all the details as much as you can. All right, that's it. Uh, let's jump right ahead and take a look at some of the dailies this morning. We'll start with the New Telegraph and the lead story on the front page of New Telegraph Presidency. Tinubu receives Certificate of Return uh, that you saw yesterday, urges Nigerians to shed artificial restrictions of bias, prejudice. So, there you go. Um, artificial restrictions. Says he's received good messages from President Macron. Poll's outcome shows democracy ripening. Buhari, your progressive welfareist ideals needed now. Oshimajo cancels. IBB, Lawan, Badabia Mela, Kalu, Governors, Oni, YCE, others felicitate President elect. APC Governors Forum made Tinubu presidency a reality. Akeri Dolu. So, yeah, all of that story associated with that uh, big lead on the front page here. So, uh, everyone still has a stake. I mean, I know no one. Uh, no one can or should make you feel any less of a citizen wherever you are because you got, uh, you've got rights uh, and you face all the law as a matter of fact. And still talking politics, look at this beneath that lead story. Dati will reclaim our mandate, says incoming government illegal, unconstitutional. Employ a legal means to seek redress on outcome. Fact tells aggrieved parties and uh, while we're all taking a look at what's playing out in the polity they're trying to remind us don't forget about this one expect another severe flooding Nema DG oh boy so you need to also make provisions make plans make preparations for for this hopefully uh, we we'll hope to see that uh, those who are in those positions of responsibility, authority, can approach things differently and ensure that, for instance, this flood in now, I'd like to imagine what has been done. The guys who have been here before, now that they say expect another flood in, what are they doing to ensure that, you know, they don't experience the same kind of scenario? Because you can't imagine anyone trying to play politics with people's lives. That's what this will be. Um, this will amount to if we don't do what we're supposed to do. That's no telegraph this morning. Well, indeed, Chamberlain. That's some of the issues that you know must not be swept away right now. Uh, yes, we're in the middle of an election, but yep. there is still governance to happen. I mean, uh, Kaya, they just raised the issue of the fact that Naira notes are still scarce. 
um, even though you have also highlighted that there is still another election. So if this is about stopping vote buying, mm -hmm. well, I guess we still might still have another two weeks. But the truth of the matter is, can people wait another two weeks, uh, you know, before Naira notes come, especially for small businesses? So uh, I don't know. I hope that all has not ceased. Um, governors has not ceased completely because of it. Well, what am I asking? That's why, that's why politicians <laughs> are politicians. Well, the Guardian is next up now, and it has this for you. Tinubu extends Olive Branch, invites youths to re rescue Nigeria. Uh, look at the riders to that story. Yaga Africa contradicts INEC on rivers. Emo results. We've lost confidence in INEC. Situation room declares. Protests to storm Abuja Unity Fountain. Niger demand fresh election. Buhari losers should take their grievances to court, not streets. APC sets up committee to meet aggrieved presidential candidates. Your attributes needed at this time. Oshibajo congratulates Tinubu. Obi breaks silence, promises to address Nigerians. Dati vows to use legal means to reclaim mandate. Tackles Lawan for trying to rewrite electoral act. So you find details uh, somewhere inside the paper, but that's what they're focusing largely on for you today. INEC dashed hopes of Nigerians' Christian Coalition alleges Tinubu task on APC overhaul, inclusive administration. And look at this story, which we tracked for you yesterday. is right here. Dogua others remanded for alleged culpable homicide. Uh, that is where you find details on page 29. Let's leave it there for the Guardian newspapers. And flip to leadership newspaper. Leadership also focuses on the big event from yesterday. Yes, you're right. The presentation of the certificate of return to the winner of the presidential election. Let's take a look at it now. Uh, Tinubu seeks Atiku will be others' support for Greater Nigeria. Take a look at the riders. Says, let politics give way to nation building pledges not to disappoint Nigerians. PMB, UK Prime Minister, echo as leaders, governors, others congratulate President-elect. PDP, LP vow to seek redress, recover mandate. Of course, we saw uh, both political parties and others in a major press conference on uh, the day uh, the election was decided. Uh, take a look at uh, Two headlines above the big story, uh, the immediate one on top, Oshimbajo, that's the vice president, urges collective action against insecurity and coups. If you're, just in case you're interested in details of this one, you find them on page 7. And right above that one, you find this as well. Assemble your economic team now, experts tell Tinubu. Of course, this is the time to roll up their sleeves and uh, set to work, not uh, the day of inauguration. And uh, right above the nameplate, you find these two stories, Kano killing Dogua as the House Majority Leader, I believe, arraigned, sent to prison on charges of, amongst others, culpable homicide, uh, inciting public disturbance, you know, events that transpired during the presidential election. And also this one, right beside it, thugs attack Sokoto PDP campaign office. You find details on page four of leadership. And just before we exit uh, leadership newspaper, let's take a look at uh, some other stories. How foreign press reported Tinobu's declaration. You find details on page four. We found our colleagues from the international community well represented during the presidential election. And uh, lastly, this one at the bottom, Borono Market Fire. <clears throat> Borono Market Fire. Police arrest 50 for looting. Let's leave it there for leadership. Well, Delhi Trust is next with this one. A presidential poll, Atiku will be head to court as Tinubu pledges fairness. NNPP demands de cancellation. Ashiwaju visits Buhari in Dora. You see UK PM, Oshimajo, IBB, ACF congratulate President elect so still the aftermath uh, reactions uh, to that declaration just yesterday uh, but take a look at this one court remands reps uh, leader Dogua over murder 
arson. It's a story we've been following for you. Police detained Kano NNPP rep elect of a firearm possession, as um, uh, we've seen uh, cross board. And just something you may have missed Nigeria's oil production and recount rose in January. Uh, that's according to OPEC. So there's been a lot of focus on the election. So uh, now it's important to start <laughs> focusing on some other things. Right. And just finally, uh, for you, farmers lament as irrigation activities grounded. I just imagine the effect of that because I mean, agriculture is, is just a fundamental to the survival of any nation. When I say agriculture, I mean food naturally. Uh, so I, I hope that this is handled appropriately. By the way, that flood story also makes its way. 32 states may witness flood this year. That's according to NISA. So as they say, we need to pray, plan and prepare for that so it doesn't three end. Three P's, right? <laughs> the three P's. <laughs> so it doesn't end uh, the way others have ended badly. That's Daily Trust newspaper. Right, take a look at Nigerian Tribune next. And uh, the lead story here says, I will work to make Nigeria better. Sinubu. And then um, you also get to see some of the riders. Six reconciliation with Atiku Obi others. As INEC presents certificates of return to him, Shatima. Buari, IBB, Lawan, governors, others congratulate president-elect. So those are the riders. So that big lead on the front page here today. At the bottom strip, we will work, we will retrieve our mandate. Atiku Okowa campaign vows. Labour Party to fight the injustice. Vice presidential candidate, let's describe to him. Ohanes Ndigbo rejects 2023 presidential election results. We also get to see that... Uh, among several other headlines on the front page of Nigerian Tribune today. But above that lead story, CSOs demand audit report of 2023 presidential NAS elections as vote of no confidence in electoral process adopted by INEC. So that's uh, what you see amongst all else. Alleged homicide reps majority leader Dogowa to be remanded in prison among several other stories on the front page of Tribune today. Well, Vanguard newspapers is the one I'm looking at for you next. And look at what they have here. Tinubu extends olive branch to Atiku Obi Kwankwanso, promises to work day and night for Nigerians. Tinubu tells Nigerian youth, I hear you loud and clear. Pledges open door policy, wealth creation, jobs sets up reconciliation committee to meet with Atiku, others. Um, uh, Akere Dolu, I see something there. Oshibajo, Senate, Oshomale, others salute President-elect. British Prime Minister Sunak congratulates Tinubu. Tinubu's election, a new dawn in Nigeria. That's according to IBB. Um, one statement that really... <laughs> I mean, that was a really surprising statement to read yesterday. Page 26 is where you'll find details of that particular statement. And uh, you also see, um, just on top of the nameplate, Paul will retrieve our mandate in court. Obi Dati Val. Presidential poll, losers should go to court, not streets. That's according to Buhari. Um, and it does look like uh, you do still have some people. Well... You also find this story. A tickle to support us, remain calm, will reclaim our stolen mandate. The problems are already beginning to rear their head. Well, we still have a government in place, so this story should interest them. Herders kill volunteer guard members, six others in Benue villages. So that story is on page six of the paper. I will leave it there for Vanguard newspapers. And flip to the Nigerian News Direct. As always, it has a busy front page for you with a potpourri of stories. And then you decide which one interests you the most. But let's take a look, first of all, at the big story. Uh, this is the way the president-elect's speech, his acceptance speech, is captioned from yesterday. My doors are open to my opponents. Tinubu, president-elect receives certificate of return, that's the first of the riders, as Obi silent, Atiku, Dati, threaten legal battle. Well, um, what's on the mind of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party right now? I guess that leaves 
much, um, you know, little guessing game if you went by the position presented by the political parties after the election was decided. It's a tough one, but then again, uh, you know, there are choices to be explored in reclaiming the mandate. Uh, you take a look at this next rider. Tinubu has demonstrated ability to build bridges that subscribe to the current vice president, Oshimbaju. Tinubu, a good man for the job, as ascribed to former military president, IDB. I am relieved that's ascribed to the Kaduna state governor, El Rufai. Uh, other reactions are pouring in quick and fast. Uh, to the emergence of uh, the new president-elect. Take a look at this one. Swing into action, free Nigerians from unbearable hardship. That's coming from uh, the Orni of Ife. Uh, let's take a look at some more stories, uh, reactions specifically to the emergence of the new president-elect. See this one at the bottom strip. President-elect Oye Tola Oweye Oluwo celebrates Tinobu's victory lot to celebrate from that camp uh, there's this one that comes um, you know following the tr ongoing trial of the former accountant general it's at the top of the uh, nameplate 109 billion naira fraud trial no document missing in ex agf idris's case file it's the efcc uh, that's saying this at this point in time i, I won't exit Nigerian News Direct without showing you this one or reading out this one for you. It's important for all par uh, parents and guardians. How we lure kids with biscuits, magical rings. 16 year old suspect confesses. You find details inside uh, page three, I believe, of the Nigerian News Direct. So parents and guardians must be very, very careful with their children and wards as they go to school, uh, especially at this point in time, and every time. Uh, and that does it for our newspaper review segment this morning. Take a break now, and we'll begin to unfold what we have for you this morning. Stay with us. gathered here at the top echelon of the main opposition political parties, including the People's Democratic Party, the Labour Party, and the African Democratic Congress. The briefing is to address urgent issues arising from the collation of results of the presidential election exercise. This election is not free and far from being fair or transparent. There is ongoing extensive cancellation of results all over the country, especially in the areas of strength of opposition parties to show up the numbers of the ruling APC. I will demand that this sham of an election should be immediately cancelled. We are challenging the very process because it fundamentally violates not just the law, but the electoral procedures which are derived from the Electoral Act, which INEC presented to all of Nigeria, and by the Electoral Act is compulsory that these results have to be uploaded from the polling units. Distinguished Nigerians, there is a lot of difference between dictatorship and democracy. And we know the yearning and the expression of Nigerians. What they want is democracy. The vice presidential candidate of the PDP, Governor Ifanyo Koo of Delta State, and the Labour Party running mate, Mr. Dati Ahmed, add their voices to the call at a separate media briefing. We are also aware that in Section 26 of the Electoral Act, 
all INEC officials, including the chairman, are supposed to have sworn to an oath of neutrality and impartiality. And we expect that you should keep to the laws of this nation. Nowhere in the world where there is respect for rule of law do people easily and hurriedly tell others with impunity, go to court, go and seek redress. The courts are final. They should have that respect. Whoever is in a hurry to tell people to go to court know what they have arranged at the courts. This is unacceptable. The call is the same for the new Nigeria People's Party and NPP, who held a separate media briefing. The deliberate use of ineligible logo of a party on the ballot papers of the 2023 general election by INEC is very unfortunate. We were shocked on the election day to discover that INEC has decided to make use of the most blurred image to represent the logo of an NPP. It is even more shocking that the blood image that INEC has put on the ballot did not include the name of our party. The opposition parties believe that Nigerians have exercised their civic responsibilities and that should be respected. Victoria Longchun, Channels Television News. Sunrise Daily. So uh, yes, we are following up with conversations about the just concluded presidential and national assembly elections. So those two gentlemen you see, they are joining us right here in the studios. We've got uh, uh, Colonel retired Colonel Leo Abara, director of security for Labour Party, very former army officer, and uh, Ayobami Oyalowo, a member of APC's PCC and also a development economy. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good, good morning. morning. Well, um, I think that picture speaks, or says it all. Um, so, are you all smiling? <laughs> that picture. And Colonel, not oh, happy with what has transpired. Well, um, perhaps I'll, I'll start with you, Colonel. Uh, in terms of how this election has panned out, yes, we've heard some position of the Labour Party, your party. But uh, what do you think about what's gone down? Yeah, um, the outcome of uh, the election was not a surprise to us. What do you mean was not a surprise? Yeah. Um, um, way back September, September, precisely September on, uh, 12th, we got the uh, APC battle map for this election. And then we studied it to find out if it was fake or true. On the 18th of uh, October, it reappeared that it was going to be violent. So we looked at the battle map and said, OK, uh, two things uh, came out there. One, the mood. Secondly, the structure that will, that will uh, execute this battle plan. And let me come. Uh, for the mood, when we looked at the presidential candidates and uh, the vice presidential candidate, we looked at the antecedents and saw that um, um, in their various states, there have been acts of violence. And um, they control such structures. So we say, well, in our situation room, it is possible that this election might be violent. And I know that uh, for PDP, uh, if I and uh, and uh, Alaji Achiku, uh, in our own assessment, uh, we are not uh, people that have a violent past. So we knew that we were going to have um, a violent election. Secondly, we looked, at, we looked at the structure of the battle, map, uh, battle plan of APC, and we dictated six structures that will execute this perceived violence. And I named them, number one, the party itself, the APC party, the state governors, all the states controlled by APC, their governors, who had the state security architecture controlled by the APC government, being hostile to the Labour Party. We anticipated that. It was part of the battle map. Then in each of the states controlled by APC, we saw that there is an organic, violent, non-state actors that are inherent in those states being used. And then the fifth structure was the INEC. The APC controlled INEC. 
and the sixth one is the judiciary. These are the structures we discovered in the APC battle plan. And we are in the last one. We just finished with the last structure, which is APC controlled INEC. We are heading towards the APC controlled judiciary. Now, so the battle plan was correct. You say this was in September. In September, we had, uh, we had a, a news that said, look. You were on this program? Yeah. This month? Yeah, this month. Never made mention of this. You told us categorically that your party was going to win. Yes. And we won. We won. Landslide. I don't understand. Last, um, we have published the results. Our, 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 our agents were in the field. And um, the results given to them by an stamped, pasted, we, all, we, have, we, have, we have them all. Well, we you, won landslide. You're a former uh, military officer. You yeah. know how intels, you know what happens with authenticating intelligence if you do get it. Yeah. So when you say you saw this APC battle map, how did you know it was authentic? Yeah. You know, when, when you have your intel, it's a battle plan. It's not a battle is it plan. an intel or how did you receive it? Yeah, we, it's, it's an intel. You see... Um, you consider it credible? Yes, we, we waited, we, we looked at it throughout the whole of September to confirm. When we started seeing appointments, comments, and all that, we said, well, let's review it again in, in October. In October, it became firm. And then we started looking for the structures that we use. And during the campaigning period, in most of the APC states, we received the hostile, well, the, the mood, like we predicted, was hostile. And then uh, it culminated in what happened in, uh, on the 11th of uh, uh, February in Lagos. You saw it, we were not uh, uh, guessing. So the battle map was okay. And if you look at the structures that are following, they're following serially. We are now with the INEC controlled APC. All now right. the next uh, one is the judiciary. And that's what they're telling us, go to court. We saw the map, battle map. If you read it before then, they will know that they will change it. So. We, we know they are telling us, go to court. All right, before and, um, we explore that a little further, uh, Mr. Olo, what do you think of this? <laughs> it sounds very funny. Uh, it's, an, it's an older man, so I want to watch my language, but uh, it's funny. You see, um, I took my time to look at the distribution of the result. If you look at it very well, you find out that uh, we we lost our key states, and I'll mention them. We lost Lagos, which is one of our major states. That is where the candidates come from. We lost Kaduna State. We lost our chairman state, Nasarawa. We lost our DG state, Plateau. We lost our president state, Kasina. And then they said um, we rigged the election. And then if you check everywhere we lost or where we won, the margin of victory or losses makes a lot of sense. But go check where they won, especially in their southeast, which is the region of their candidate. They got 90% and above, but it is fair to them. It is only where we either lose marginally or won that was rigged. It tells you a story that a loser will always find reasons to cry about their losses. And I will have told them what they should have done. I see them having joint press conferences, having joint willing uh, meetings. And these people should have done this before the election. You know, the LP came from the PDP, the candidate. The NNPP candidate came from the PDP. If you combine their numbers, these people could have easily won this election with all the circumstances. But they decided to go into the election a divided house without thinking through their actions. Now, their actions have now come back to bite them because they split their votes, they split their, their own crowd. We went into the election a united front, yet we lost key states. So when you begin to try to make sense of their willings, and they are unnecessary complaints. You begin to wonder I, I if, they, need, if they thought through this before the election. I, I think that we need to be very temperate. No, no. Well, okay. Just a moment. I, I think that it is, it is very important that we be temperate with the language that we use. Because whether or not we accept it, the emotions of a number of people are quite raw, raw. at this moment. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that's one. And then when you also look at the fact that INEC promised a lot, that there was going to be deepened transparency in these elections, especially that, that, that the transparency was going to happen real time. In other words, as it was happening in the, happening in the polling unit, people will be able to see it wherever they were logged on, on an IREF server. And that didn't happen, at least immediately. We know that the server is being uploaded now, and maybe we are, maybe we're almost done. I, I don't know what the status is this morning, but as I, I yesterday, well, 50%, okay. as I yesterday, it was all closer to 80%. Okay, mm -hmm. 80 so yeah. it's been uploaded. And for a number of people who are checking, this delayed uploading um, is causing controversy. So, um, okay. I uh, think it's extremely can I important to that. It's extremely to important to be, to be temperate with language. No problem. We, and we cannot dismiss the fact that in some places where you had this, where you had this, um, what they call that now, where you had this, um, where he has talked about violence, because he's talking about a system of violence. For instance, in Lagos, it wasn't like as if the elections were honky dory, peaceful elections. Uh, yes, we might say that there were pockets of violence, but there was violence, and there was brutal violence, and people got very injured, at least in Lagos, and we've also heard reports in some other places, there have been online videos that have surfaced. So it would really, really be out of place for us to dismiss some of these reports of violence that we've seen, and also the fact that an INEC overpromised and underdelivered. Okay, let me quickly start with the violent part. When you have 176, thousand polling unit and we have pocket of violence which we don't like nobody likes it but unfortunately it happened it does not generally affect the overall conduct of the election but i must also say this there has been you just mentioned lagos everybody has been shouting lagos but did you see what happened in enugu and anambra did you see what happened in Onisha, where people were beaten up because they either wanted to or they voted apc it is easy to beam the light on Lagos, Lagos, Lagos. Lagos is not Nigeria. Lagos is just one state in Nigeria. Lagos is a microcosm of Nigeria. But and is an umbra and uh, a microcosm of another world. We have evidence of where people either were beaten up, were rough treated, simply because they wanted or they have voted APC. So let's not make it about Lagos alone. It was and unfortunate circumstances that should never have happened. Our people have come back. In fact, I have one lady who had to leave and come back to Abuja because they knew she voted APC and her home was targeted for violence. But nobody is bothered to report. I mean, nobody is bothering to report this because it is not according to the agenda that everybody wants to set against the APC. That is number one. Now, talking about uploading the result. The results are now being uploaded. You are, I even thought it was about 50%. You now told me it's over 80% as of yesterday. Approaching 80%. Yeah. Like I yesterday. cannot speak for INEC on that, but I can hazard some guess based on the experience we've all had. If you have a platform, I mean, they've used it in small elections in states, but when you load everything at once on a platform, there are glitches that could happen. And I'll give you an example. Before we were all doing transfers on our accounts, I mean, our bank apps and everything. But the moment this cashless regime was foisted on us in a way that looks half as hard, I'm sure you yourself must have experienced transactions failure over time. I still experience them even as at yesterday. Today, I've not tried to do any transaction. So it tells you that probably Probably it is because you are loading so much on that platform. And that is why they had to take their time. And we must understand this, that whether they loaded it immediately or they are loading it now, it is still available for anybody to go check. And if you have discrepancies, then you can make issues. But making it uh, an issue that because it didn't load immediately is not enough to create uh, unnecessary problem, I, I don't think it is right. Because somebody in the report you, you pushed now, somebody was talking about, they said, go to court, go to court, go to court. If you don't go to court, where do you want to go to? Do you want to repeat 2011? Do you want to kill people on the street because you don't agree to an election result? I don't think so. 
what right. civilized people do is still go to court. All right, Connor. Yeah. What do you think of this? You see, um, you don't. You can't use your hand to cover the sun. If Yaga Africa says, INEC was not transparent. If the EU observer said, this election was not transparent. If the observer that have come here to observe what has happened say, this, the whole process is not transparent. Then I don't know how, how else we are going to, and the Nigerians are saying, this thing is not transparent. What else do we say? So it's not about uh, somebody winning or being pronounced winner. The authentic results are there. Our agents have authentic results released by INEC stamped. INEC refused to upload the uh, election from the polling booths as stated by the law. I don't, I'm not a lawyer. I don't want to go into that. But let me just look at the violent aspect of it. Somebody say, he said that violence may not be able to affect the outcome of the elections. We saw in videos. We are in Lasso. They say people who don't speak this language should get out of this place. We have seen several places in Lagos, in Rivers, in Imo. We are security agencies, you know, we are, we are, we are wearing uh, army uniform, uh, police uniform being used to destroy ballot boxes. The videos are out there. You saw a woman that was badly beaten, badly beaten. She still came back to vote. She's a Nigerian. She never committed any offense. Her offense is that she wants to vote. We have the national security architecture deployed fully. The state was deployed. And you said the, that on good authority that the state was deployed for this Yes, elections? the state was deployed. You see, the structures, the structures of the state the security architecture include the defense. It includes About, the if, if internal there, security uh, if, agencies. If, I'm there, coming. There, there are two I'm separate coming. things. I'm coming. You know, they were out there. But these things were happening. These structures of the state are paid to protect Nigerian citizens. But here they were fully deployed on the road and non-state actors, violent non-state actors were taking people out. You saw blood all over. In River State, oh, in, especially in Obiakbo, it was terrible. Okay, I was uh, in a situation where people were calling me. Yeah, like Bokano, was, let, let me just I, I, let me I, just I know you know that uh, in let, every let election. Finish. No, yeah, just let me just finish. You will finish. You okay. know that in every election, Security officials go out there to ensure that people vote peacefully. Yeah. So when you say they were deployed, people could get the impression that you're saying that they were under instructions to manipulate the election. No, is no, that, no. Is that no. what you said? I, I didn't say that. But in the situation room, the first call I got was from Imo State in a place called Ayana Junction. The soldiers were preventing people from going to vote. Okay. We so, called the brigade so. commander, and I think it was resolved. The second right. call was from River State that people wearing military uniform, we are not uh, uh, allowing Labour Party officials to come into the INEC... Uh, is, is your party going to identify that and take that complaint to either the CDS or to the next authority? Those, those, those who are doing that are um, uh, already doing it. Okay. And we saw uh, uh, police... police uh, let me bring in my police. colleagues from Lagos. I have questions for both of you, so yeah. you, you'll still have time. So, guys, please go ahead. Well, thanks, Chamberlain. Uh, let me just um, follow up with uh, Colonel, and I'd like to know, and I imagine a lot of Nigerians will want to know as well, uh, it's been a few days after that election, and I imagine uh, that you've been compiling those incidents, uh, which you say were targeted at your party across board. Uh, do you have, like, a, a holistic view now? Just how many would you say, uh, how many attacks would you say were targeted at your party or perhaps... Uh, areas where your party uh, holds a strong, uh, a strong hold, so to speak? Okay, I'm not sure you can hear me, Colonel. Uh, just to confirm, did you get my question? I got it, but he did it, but it's to, quest it's to Colonel. Oh, okay. Um, okay, well, since... Um, I can hear you, but Colonel can't. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Let me come to uh, Mr. Okay, Yellow. Ask me the question. Well, let me help him with the question. No, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, if, if you can't hear me, <laughs> Colonel, uh, let me come to Mr. Yalowo. We'll, we'll work on that uh, and come back to you. Mr. Yalowo, uh, Colonel spoke to some issues which I'd like you to uh, respond to. He talked about uh, some layers which, uh, which they had mapped out before the election and talked about your party itself uh, having violent tendencies, uh, even the governors 
security agencies, which he says are controlled uh, by your party, and said uh, the organic state or non-state actors this time around, which uh, he believes would also uh, participate in this. And uh, I mean, those are major allegations targeted at your party, even security agencies, basically, but your party in the midst of it and the governors. Uh, do you want to debunk that? Do you have proof uh, that debunks those uh, points he made? I don't, I don't want to debunk anything. They are the ones making the allegations. They should prove what they are, what they are making as allegations. I mean, it's easy for them to make these funny allegations, and I still ask this simple question. We went into the election holding down 22 states. We came out winning only 12 states, clearly. And then they are claiming we have uh, uh, done this and done that. Let them go prove it. But he said they don't want to go to court because he claimed that the APC owned the court. Meanwhile, we've all seen how APC elections have been overturned in court before. We are all living witnesses to what happened in Bayasa. Our candidate was having a rehearsal to be sworn in in less than 24 hours when the, the court took it away from him over some flimsy excuses. So claiming the APC controlled the court is, is, is something that I find very pathetic because I, I don't think we should uh, destroy institution here because of our raw temperament or because of the pain of losing an election. And I say it clearly, if they went into the election as one body, probably we would not even be here complaining. But they decided to split their vote because if you combine their numbers together, they hold with NNPP, they hold about 13 to 14 million vote to our 8.7 million vote. But they are not thinking that way. They, they lost themselves the election by refusing to go as one body into the election. And if we talk about a complaint from Situation Room, we got plenty of them and we documented them. But we, we don't want to make issue because our, 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 our uh, I wouldn't want to say candidate now, the president-elect has tried to wave the olive branch and we want to hold on to that, trying to make peace. However, anybody, no matter how pained you are by the loss, we must realize that after an election, we must we have a country to build. When we, we ha they, they've already polarized the, the people because of election, we know how religious organizations got involved. Everybody were making all manner of incendiary uh, statement after uh, before the election. So we, we, we would not want to go into that. Anybody who have proofs should go prove it in the court. But if you now say you don't want to, to go to the court, do you want to go on the street? Do you want people to die? I don't think it's the wise thing to do. I think at this stage, people should call for calm and then do what civilized people do. Go to court with your evidences and we will counter yours with our evidence that we have gathered. Like I said to you, APC people, we are not allowed to vote in so many of the Southeastern states. We have evidences. We have people who were actually, in fact, I, we, we, we have a lot of our people who called in that. Okay. They either couldn't vote or they couldn't go out on that day okay, okay, because, hold on, hold on. Okay. You, you respond, you respond. because they were either being manhandled, being targeted, or being uh, uh, even violently dealt with. We saw videos of a man in Onisha, St. Teresa School specifically, who was beaten up and treated like a criminal simply because somebody said he voted APC. All these things are there for everyone to see. But no, it is about APC uh, rigged election that we actually lost 12 states that was APC state before the election. But no, they don't want to see that, that they lost themselves the election by splitting their votes. They are pretending not to understand that. If you had added their 11 state plus FCT plus the PDP 11 state, I mean, PDP 12 state, that is the 22 state that will have given well, them Mr. Election. Mr. Oyalawa. But they don't think that way. But well, Mr. Oyalawa, I mean, things are usually maybe not that simple. I mean, you know, even if that had happened, the sentiments might be quite different. But I mean, I'll leave that to politicians uh, to do all the permutations. But just to confirm, uh, Colonel, can you hear me now? Okay, looks like Colonel still can't hear me. Uh, so let me just uh, uh, follow up. Yeah, just, uh, go ahead, can go hear ahead, I can hear oh, you. Oh, you can hear me, fantastic. So the, I know you want to respond uh, to Mr. what Mr. Oyalo was said. So in addition to that, the question I asked earlier is just, what is the skill uh, of the attacks that you recorded, which you say were targeted uh, at perhaps your supporters, people who wanted to vote 
uh, you believe wanted to vote for Labour Party across the country. Have you documented them? Just how many are they? I imagine that days after the elections, you should have maybe a figure to that so Nigerians can maybe better understand where you're coming from. Uh, we have documented them, and um, I'm not um, uh, permitted to do, uh, reveal that. Uh, those who will do that will do that. But let me just uh, let you know. In, um, in Lagos State, it was too violent. Everybody saw it. It was not one of a thing. We were there on the 11th of uh, uh, February. Um, Labor Party uh, Fed Force, we are macheted. Their cars destroyed across the, across, across the state. It's not the first time it's happening. We knew very well the antecedents of uh, Lagos State uh, uh, with this violence and the toggery. And they never disappointed. In uh, Kogi State, it was the same story. We saw videos of uh, um, um, a local government chairman being escorted by uh, people wearing police uniform, going about destroying uh, uh, ballot boxes where uh, Labour Party has a stronghold. And uh, in Imo State, there were no uh, elections in Izombe, in Umower, in Oru East, in Hiala, and different parts of uh, the FCT and Lagos. There were no vo votes, yet there were results. If you look at River State, I think the most notorious was the, the Obiapo local government. We are allegedly that the governor got involved with the security agencies and talks. And we saw videos of a man that belonged to one of uh, the uh, uh, organizations, uh, which is a violent non state actor in River State called the Grassroots Development Initiative. This man was caught with uh, dynamite. There were uh, Yukopas that uh, had blood on their body. These are Nigerians. What was their offenses? They just want to exercise their franchise. They were being bullied, killed, chased out. It was on video all over. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what else to, to say. Okay. Obi won landslide. And we have the original results. Well, Colonel. And um, then I, with time, I think the appropriate authorities in the Labour Party will publish them. Well, Colonel. And then in many cases, in many places, especially in southern Borno and uh, Yobe, there were no beavers deployed. In some cases, when INEC comes, they come very late. And they come with insufficient materials. So by the time they, uh, they, 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 they start uh, operating, we didn't fear why they want to close. And let me tell you why it is so. The INEC is controlled by the APC. The chairman was appointed by the APC. The commissioners were appointed by the APC. Well, um, the Colonel, uh, Colonel uh, just, the just to come in here, I mean, that's why yeah, it's called APC, the Independent National the Electoral Commission. In its the laws, beavers, the laws the stipulate, uh, pardon me, Colonel, just to follow up with what you said, the laws of INEC stipulate how the commission is meant to operate with its national commissioners. I mean, yes, you cannot take away those appointments, but in terms of its operations, how uh, it carries itself and makes its decision, it is meant to be independent in its laws. So saying that uh, it is uh, controlled, I, I hope you have proof to that, uh, which negates uh, the law which sets up the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. How independent they are. If you have told us, and I can remember one gentleman, I want to mention his name, that gave INEC the integrity, the, 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 the face for Nigerians to accept these beavers was a gentleman, an erudite fellow called Mike Higini. He was the one that sold beavers to us. And I want that gentleman to come out again. I know his integrity. You know, Nigerians love that man because I followed him and he, he was the face that sold beavers to us. And as he was talking, when we finished, we entered the situation room in a, in a, in a Labour Party. And we looked at Mike Higini. His integrity is fantastic, but he's a lawyer. He's not a technical person. And we now asked INEC, we need a technical person to come out and say Beavers is a game changer. And let me tell you, I have a master's degree in cybersecurity. Any, any of those gadgets deployed in the cyberspace and you are transmitting results from one pulling unit to the server, and it's not encrypted. It has a question mark. 
That's number one. Number two, even if it's going to be encrypted, is it going to be end-to-end -end encryption? But whether encryption, whether transmission, transmission never happened as provided by the law. INEC presented. That is the issue. So after many days, they said doctoring it and all that. So when I say it well, was... Well, um, it's, um, it's Colonel, pardon me to comment now. Of the We're due for a break it now. Uh, but it's important not to make claims without proof uh, to back them up such that we pass the right message uh, to Nigerians. So if you claim that these things were doctored, do you have proof right now uh, to show Nigerians that indeed your claims uh, are what you say they are? But we'll go to break, Colonel. And when we return, uh, we'll take on some of those issues. My colleague is also here uh, with some questions, so please stay with us. a day after the announcement of the 2023 winner of the presidential election. We still have Colonel Leo Abara, uh, the Director of Security of the Labour Party, as well as Ayobami Oyalawo, a member of the APC's PCC in our Abuja studio. Uh, Bukola, over to you now. Yes, thank you, Gayade. Uh, Mr. Oyalawo, let me come to you now. You know, you make an interesting point when you liken uh, you know, the challenges with the upload of results uh, to IREV with bank transactions, you know, the challenges that we have with transfers and all of that. And I have been having such uh, challenges, uh, you know, in recent times for three days and I've been unable to do transfers. But we're talking about ma a major election, presidential and national assembly election. And all of these issues were trashed with INEC before the election. And INEC assured that everything would go smooth sail. Nigerians have been expressing concerns about the delay in the upload of their results. And I want to go to, you know, one of such uh, concerns ex 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 uh, expressed by Nigerians. I've seen this one posted, you know, by one of such. And uh, th they have gone back to check on the IREV and discovered that results that they snapped at their polling units and kept as evidence was not captured in, uh, you know, INEX IREV portal. In fact... Uh, there's a highlight here done for Chevy View Estate Gate, no result yet. And in the result for their candidate, what is recorded is 457 votes. If this can be found in so many other areas, don't you think that it could substantially alter the entire outcome of the presidential election and a particular candidate may have been denied their mandate? Are you done? Okay. Um, like I said, you have um, 13,000 polling units in Lagos. You have 126,000 in Nigeria. You mentioned one that has not been uploaded, and does invalidate. 176,000. 176,000, yeah. And does that invalidate? I mean, okay. you, you, you have a, an easy way of even going to court now, because whatever is uploaded, if it's even from what was signed, it's an evidence that you can use in court, and the court will now sit on it. Making so much issue out of such thing, we could bring you all what happened in Enugu. I have one here myself, where the person who signed for the APC is the person who signed for some other party. And the, 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 the thing is here, but we are not making noise out of it. We are just keeping it that if there's an issue, we will, we will go ahead and, and do what we needed to do. I have it right here on my phone. I can actually show you whoever signed one, Igbo, something, that's, that's the name. He signed for two or three parties. And this is, this is what happens strategically in the entire Southeast. But you people keep talking about one place in Lagos or two places in Lagos, but nobody's talking about the East that we noticed in the Southeast. In the entire Southeast, they had 90, 90, 90% everywhere, but it was fair. And then suddenly, in places where nobody will even, nobody, for instance, where I voted, nobody voted for Labour because nobody knew the party in, in, in the place where I voted. So, we, we, I mean, I, I, I find it very funny that people make these allegations and we have said, if you truly have evidence, go to court. 
Somebody gave another example yesterday. I'm glad that you talked about your transaction that is not uh, doing, I mean, you can't do it in the last three days. If you finally go through it, does it mean the figure will change? No, if the figure changes, then you go to the bank and complain. So whether INEC uploaded IREV immediately or they uploaded two days after, all you need to do is you have evidence because we have agents on the field who came with evidences to us too. So if you have evidence, document it and do what civilized people do. Honestly, this unnecessary complaint bringing out one or two, definitely we've never had an election that is going to be 100% foolproof. But for this particular election, with the way beavers worked, a lot of things came to, to pass. Places where they could just bring in one million vote, two million vote, suddenly we are saying 500,000, 600,000, 400,000. It tells you that the election was largely free, fair, and credible. However, when people lose, they always find reasons for their losses. I have given them the reason why they lost is because they couldn't go together as a body. But since they think otherwise, they have every right under the law to take the legal recess, I mean legal recourse to seek redress. However, trying to taint everything without thinking about the implication, the larger implication, is dangerous. Well, because well, let Mr. us Mr. assume Mr. without Yalawa. conceding. Mr. Mr. Yalawa. You, it may not be. It may not be safe to say that you know some of these complaints are isolated. Um, if the uh, the other political parties present their evidence, it could be far-reaching across the country. But I'm going to leave you to you know. It's um, good to go to court. I, I, it it I, is I'll, the court that will determine. I'll leave, I'll leave you the, to the engage with other politicians on that. Let me you. come to. Let me come to Colonel Abara. Uh, Colonel, I, I hope you can hear me. I'd like us to talk very quickly about the sanctity of a voter's choice. Uh, especially in the light of, um, you know, the experiences of many voters across the country on the presidential and national assembly election day. Um, you know, Mr. Yalo talked about, you know, the concern in the southeast region of voter intimidation. And we saw some of those videos uh, as much as, you know, they have happened in the southwest. We also saw them uh, in the southeast region as well. So going forward, because there'll be elections uh, in two weeks and subsequently, uh, going forward, how uh, do you suggest that the you know, voters' choice will be uh, you know, sacred? Uh, are, you, are you thinking along the lines of the concern about party agents being present at uh, polling units? Because you know, if I don't tell someone who I'm voting for, nobody's supposed to know. And I'd also like you to respond to the concern about voter intimidation in the Southeast region as well, for those who wanted to vote other political parties other than the Labour Party? Well, uh, in the South is where did voting uh, take place? In a few places. In Imo said uh, there, were, there, there was uh, almost uh, only 10% or 15% of uh, uh, voting that, w that went on. In Uguta, a Brigadier General called me and said, look, there are about uh, 10 uh, uh, police units, no INEC uh, official. In, uh, uh, in uh, Izombe, in uh, Oru East, there was no, there, there was no uh, uh, voting in the South East. So we are with Togri, we are, we are the Togri. Rather, security agencies, we are preventing people from uh, going to vote. And um, the issue of uh, River State and uh, Lagos, you know, very uh, uh, shocking. And the uh, Kogi State as well. We saw people dressed in police uniform you know, coming to carry, uh, carry ballot boxes and, and destroy them. It, it, it's on video. It happened in Edo as well. People wearing military uniform coming to uh, police units to carry ballot boxes and destroy them. The videos are there. We have all evidences. And our agents have authentic results stamped by INEC. Mm. And uh, let me tell you, let me tell you, you see, when so I... So just when a we moment, said, uh, uh, Colonel. So when you say you have your agents at the polling units and, you know, they were able to stamp and authenticate the results, I imagine then that you also had your situation room. That's how you're able to tell that you won by a landslide. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So I, I want to know, which other states did you win, apart from the ones which INEX says you won? Well, I don't have the, I have the, I don't have the, uh, the, the, the breakdown with me here. And uh, I think the appropriate um, uh, um, 
component of the Labour Party will come up with it. Uh, no, but it's very important. When you say that you won landslide, uh, you know, you must be able to say, at least in these other states, this is where we, our results are different. In this other state, our results are different. That uh, hasn't yeah, happened yeah, in so Lagos, far. In Lagos, the margin, the, the margin of defeat was <laughs> alarming. In, in, uh, in uh, Ondo, in uh, Plateau, it was massive. You won in Ondo? Yes, we did. We did. And then in Plateau, it was massive. You know, so across the country. So I don't have the figures, I don't have the, this, in, and the appropriate uh, authority will brief you on that. But we are sure that right. it will be won massively across the country. Okay. It has no doubt about that. But you see, when we looked at the battle map, we knew that after INEC, it's going to be the court. All right, so uh, the dam suggests, I mean, you'll be going to the court. Uh, as you said, after INEC, is going to be the court. But now there will be another round of elections, the governorship elections. So uh, would your party, is there any position on that yet? Because, I mean, much as we hear some persons, we can't exactly tell what party they belong to. Some of them thrashing the PVC, saying they might not come out. Will your party be encouraging your members to come out and vote for the next I elections? I think it's the chairman of the party who will uh, have that uh, position to say that. I'm okay. just in charge of security. But what about you? Would you go out to vote? I will. Uh, I will. Right. But let, let, me, let, me just, let me just finish. No. We, we uh, let me out. just finish. Pa pa how, me how, how will the government treat the violent, non-state non actors uh, acting in Lagos, in Kugis? Have you reported to, State, have you reported to we the... We have reported... We have even seen some of them wearing uniform connive. You reported to the police? Yes, we have even okay. to the military. So we'll tell you, we'll hope that And no, nobody has been arrested. Nothing okay. has Would you be going out? In, my, in, my, own, my, in my own estimation, of course I'm going to be voting, but mm -hmm. beyond that, you, you check uh, uh, the pattern of voting before, because what we do, we look at the pattern of voting. All right. It's not significantly different in terms of numbers. But he just said now that people didn't come out in the southeast. However, they were posting. He said they had 15 percent. You said 15 percent. That means there was no enough coming out. Voting was about 10 percent. Good. Just people okay. came out. They were denied no, voting. Sorry, I wasn't yes. interjecting. Okay. 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 But unfortunately, they were posting 500,000, 400,000 in their own region, and they are not complaining about it. I don't know if they are seeing the right. funniness of what they are doing. I imagine making that... issue out of where we want, but pretending not to see the fact that they massively rigged in the South East because it's I South. imagine both parties will all have compiled their cases when exactly. they head to the next And then stage. I think we should Sorry, respect we the court. Sorry, we I think we should reached. respect the court. Correct, I correct, to say we never the, the APC. Don't say, don't, don't say Labour Party rigged in all the right. South East. Gentlemen, it's, it's, we, it's we have to thank thing. both of you for coming on. Uh, we appreciate your uh, uh, I mean, honoring the invitation. Thank you for coming on and all the best to Thank both you of you. Thank, Thank you, Marvin. We will be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, yes, as you've seen there, we've got Chief Dilo Mamodu joining us next as the Director of Strategic Communications for the PDP's PCC. Good morning, sir. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Well, yes, it's, uh, it's not exactly the morning after, but... Uh, it feels like the morning after, like that, right? You know, but, yeah, he's gotten the certificate of return, and your party's been speaking loudly about what they think uh, transpired. Uh, but um, let's get your impression of what you think of the whole process. Last Saturday was another sad day for our country. It was a day Nigerians were supposed to get it right. I mean, there had been so much drama, melodrama, promises upon promises. Beavers will be a game changer. But what we witnessed was a charade. And now, I'm becoming paranoid about elections in Nigeria, and I'm also becoming superstitious about the years that I end with three. One of our worst elections took place in 1983. In 1993, we had our best election. It was killed. Now, in 2023, 
In fact, we're much worse than we were in 1983, a year you could call an analog era. So with all the billions, if not trillions, wasted on this election, we might as well have told Nigerians, APC is not ready to go, so we don't need an election. We're turning Nigeria into a one-party state. And then I'm sure in our usual docility, we would agree. But to waste all that money, waste people's time, the young people, I pity the young people the most, they came out, they had faith, they had hope in their country, and they came out and you dashed that hope. Instead of a renewed hope, you dashed their hopes again. So for us, the election was a complete waste of resources. And we tried our best to make it perfect. <laughs> that even if you are going to rig, there is a method to madness. If we're going to rig, at least follow the process. Follow the process. And then everybody can go back home. Follow the process of rigging? Yeah, no, the process <laughs> what that you the process that you laid down for yourself. You they, they made the laws. The political parties did not make the law. They made the laws. So what we are saying is that you promised us that we will be able to transmit. I voted in Lagos, for example. We knew. All our agents, at least one thing you must say about PDP, is that we had agents in virtually every polling unit in Nigeria. And I'm sure some of the other parties also had their agents. Mm. But what came back to us, under my own directorate, Strategic Communications, we had a liaison office. And we were able to instantly get results as they were happening. Okay. But what... INEC has declared, and then where were they hurrying to? Hurrying to Golgotha. Where were they rushing to? All they needed to do when the major political parties started complaining was to apply the brakes. Listen to them. The man just took a few comments and said, I've decided to go ahead. Wait till I complete. It's like going, it's like telling a doctor, I am dying. I'm feeling some pains. This is your surgery. Something is going wrong. And instead of the doctor saying, oh, okay, let's see if we can get other opinions. Let's see what we can do. He said, no, wait until you die. And after you die, then we will investigate what went wrong. No. You don't do that anywhere in the world. Now Nigeria is bad, is back in the bad news. I'm Everywhere, just, I, I, globally. I'm just, I'm just wondering, um, Chief, I'm wondering how it is that we're going to be assessing this. Um, are, are you trying to say that your party won these elections? My dear sister, there was no question about that. And I will tell you why. It took a lot of effort for Chief Bola Tinubu to be defeated in Lagos. It took a lot of effort. We all knew that... But he was defeated. Wait. Just wait. a moment. No, just no, a moment, this, sir. You see, politics, I, I, voting I'll, is I'll a game of you. mathematics. I know. But, uh -huh. but the point I'm trying to make is that he was defeated, and it was not by the PDP. Uh, can I tell you something? That's why you will know I'm being objective. The defeat, let me tell you, this thing is a game of mathematics. Mm -hmm. And those who plotted everything that happened, they were poor mathematicians because they left some telltale evidences. Telltale, very obvious. Now, in Lagos, what was recorded for Labour Party was much higher than what happened. You see, there was this space inside the Electoral Act that made it possible. All you have to do, they did it in Oshu State, all you have to do is where Labour Party or PDP is having high votes, come there and say there is overvoting. There is, there, these are artful dodgers. Just say there are overvoting here and there, and then it will be cancelled. So they cancelled, they did it in Sokoto, they did it in Nemo, they did it in Rivers. No, just a moment, sir. Uh, uh, the question I asked you was whether you think that the it's PDP not about, it, it's won not the about losing. That's no, what just I, a moment. Yes. You, you pointed out the example of 
Lagos, and I said that, yes, indeed, the APC was defeated. You said it took a lot no, of defeat. Just defeat. a moment. You said it took a lot of defeat in Ubu in Lagos. But I, the point I'm trying to make was that it was not by the PDP. And that even in the places where the uh, APC lost, um, in many places, it was not, the surprising thing was that they were not defeated by the PDP. It was Labour Party which swept those states. Uh, so I'm just wondering, on what basis is the PDP making its own complaint? Okay. I will go back to Lagos. All they had to do, you see, when you want to steal, when I say you are not food dodger, when you want to steal, you create this impression of neutrality, of, oh, it's a credible election. So you deliberately, what happened in Lagos was to make sure they left Lagos, but they knew it was overwhelming. There is a theory in elections that you cannot rig where you are overpowered. So what will happen is, what is the margin of the results? That's what happened in Lagos. In Oshun State, you said PDP did not, PDP in Oshun State One. won. But even at that, the margin was still manipulated. But they could not do it because the people, don't forget that Governor Ademola Adeleke is fresh, is loved to beat by his people. So, it would have been very difficult. There would be, I mean, probably too many lives would have been wasted. So they avoided there, but still made sure that the margin was small. Then when you go up north, when you go up north, that is where you had the most desperate governors who had bullied their own president, bullied, abused, took him to court. So they were under pressure. Okay. They said they had no elders in the north. So they were under pressure to deliver to their principal. And the final one, when you see a president of a country come out after voting against the laws of the land, and you show who you voted for, for me, that was a subliminal mm -hmm. message. Okay to some people, to some so, state actors, and so, that's what happened. So, Chief, looking at uh, Yaga's report, uh, they call it the 2023 presidential elections are once again a missed opportunity. INEC must be fundamentally reformed. So in that piece, uh, the part where they speak about findings on results, now it says, based on reports from 97%, that is, 1,453 of 1,507 of compiled polling units. Yaga's Africa statistical analysis shows that the APC should receive between 34.4% and 37.4% of that of the vote. Uh, Labour Party should receive between 24.2% and 28.4% of the votes. The NMPP should receive between 4.6% and 6.7% of the votes. The PDP should, re should receive between 28.3% and 31.1% of the votes. So that went on. Now, from your analysis, because many of these results fell within that range that was announced by the commission, does the PDP have contrary figures to the percentages that were released? I am not the chairman of INEC. Those figures, I believe, would be released at the appropriate time. What I know is that from our own statistics, since you are using statistics now, PDP did extremely well across Nigeria. In Osho State, we were able to take on the APC power. That is the ancestral home of Chibola Tinubu. We were able to do that. In Noyo State, we fought hard. In Nikiti State, we fought across Southwest. If you go to the South South, you will meet PDP. If you go to the Southeast, you will. In the Northeast, so how you will know something was fundamentally wrong was that when the results were coming out, because we were compiling, we were doing our own collation, we realized that Atiku Abubakar 
was leading in the northeast, was leading in the northwest. Those are the places where you will normally have the largest votes. But what did we see? Once the results are coming from the INEC direction, everything fell apart. And this is the crux of the matter. In Sokoto, I was speaking to our governor and our, the director of our campaign, the DG of our campaign, Governor Aminu Tambua. It was a tug of war. Wherever you found the APC governors, it was a tug of war in Imo, in Neboi. And we alerted INEC that they are changing things. People were carrying guns mm. to intimidate people. No, but, okay. In, in but, Kogi, mm. we saw what happened yeah. to Natasha. Sorry to button chief. Yes. But, you know, before the elections, we pointed out some things that many thought that the PDP should actually address before they go into the elections. Now, we've seen the result that came through from Rivers. Uh, they, many, still wondering if the, if the PDP had handled that, well, maybe it might have tilted the vote. And of course, everybody knows too about the primaries. If they have pulled ranks and gotten other parties to close ranks, maybe we, we may not be talking about this now. So with the benefit of hindsight, do you think PDP should have done some things differently? No. In Rivers, we all know about the temper and temperament of God Mawiki and what he's capable of doing, and which he did openly. It's all, all over the social media. Yeah, but I'm talking, no. I, I think my colleague is also referring, I think we can add this to it, is the fact that the presidential candidate of the Labour Party was a key member of the PDP. Yeah. And it would seem that your party was swimming against the tide with the presidential candidate that he fielded for these elections. The Southeast, which used to be the bread and butter of the PDP in terms of how their votes usually turn out for the PDP, even sitting governors couldn't retain their seats or couldn't get their seats for Senate. They lost it to the Labour Party. Doesn't it say something about what happened with this election? No, we've had similar elections in the past, 1979-1983, when Chief Obafemi Aulo contested from the Southwest, just like Tinubu has done now. Chief Azikiwe contested from the Southeast, just like Ubi has done now. Alagishe Wichagari contested from the Northwest. And, of course, we had Amino Kano in Kano. The only reverse now is that Atiku is northeast and northwest. It's the same thing. Look, whenever two southerners face a mainstream northern candidate, it is almost virtually impossible. Yeah, no, that, but you underestimate, I, no, no, just a moment, yeah. you underestimate that in the time of Awolowo, there was no north-south alliance. What they had was a southwest-southeast alliance. There was no north-south alliance, and it was seen that they under, and it was seen that that's the lesson of the APC. No. That's the lesson that the APC learned in terms of the merger between the ACN and the CPC. So it, it was seen that the PDP underestimated that, and also the the north-south sentiment in terms of where the part where you know the president should come from. Let me repeat what I told you the last time I was here. Let's not live under this fantasy that suddenly Nigeria has changed to the extent that people no longer vote along ethnic lines, no longer vote along religious lines. What transpired last Saturday was that the major factor was ethnic. In Lagos, the reason why the Labour Party was able to take on the APC behemoth was because of the preponderance of the Igbo people in Lagos. But, they are everywhere. You could but, see that. But you just spoke about young people. And yes. for a number of people, they think that young people really made... I mean, I think a lot of young people will feel very bad that you say that this is about ethnic sentiment. The people who voted and the, who campaigned the, the, for... The platform, the... there must be a foundation to every building. Where we are, there is a foundation holding this building. The foundation was that Ubi started from the east. He had his base intact. Atiku had his base intact in the northeast, in the northwest. The only person who could not hold his base was Balatinubu. And now you are telling me that a man who could not hold his base suddenly is the champion in the north. I'm sorry. All I, right, let's I, go to I, I our colleagues in Lagos. Go ahead, please.
Well, thanks, Chamberlain. Uh, Chief, just uh, to also shed light on this issue, uh, we saw your party, the Labour Party, hold joint press conferences. Even the vice presidential candidate also spoke, it will seem, with one voice, uh, asking that uh, the whole process be stopped, um, even uh, given a vote of no confidence on INEC and all of that. And uh, for a lot of people now, even though the APC has said that the reason why your party lost or the Labour Party lost is because uh, it was a divided house. But really, who then really can Nigerians, uh, will I say, believe that you have a claim to winning the election? The Labour Party says, we just had Colonel uh, Abara saying, he believes with the figures they have that they won convincingly. You also said that well, with the figures you have, you won convincingly. And when we look across board, the states in, in the South, for example, were shared between the Labour Party and the PD before the ones that flipped, for example, uh, we saw Lagos, even Imo, an APC state, was won by Labour Party. In the North as well, Nasarawa, Plateau, your party taking Katsina, Kebi, even uh, Sokoto naturally. So really, who should Nigerians, would I say, pay attention to that has the legitimate claim to winning between the Labour Party and your party? Our priority here should be to talk about the process. A faulty process cannot give birth to a perfect process. The foundation was very bad. The Electoral Act was not followed. It was not obeyed. So whatever results you get out of it, whosoever won last Saturday cannot lay claim to legitimacy. That's what we are saying. I'm not here to trade and bandy words about who won, who did not win. We are saying a process. That process gave birth to the hulabalu that we have right now. What I'm telling you is that until we go back to that process and give people a semblance of hope that your vote would count after being counted, then there is no hope in the electoral process. Nobody is fighting that someone was declared winner. What we are saying is that under what basis were you able to bring all these results? Where did they come from? It looks like abracadabra. Where did the results come from? So show us where the results came from. We stopped you while you were counting. We said some things are fundamentally wrong. Can you please address it before you continue? Just like somebody who is a victim of hypnotism. They just continued. That is the basis of this. I know my principal, Atiku Abubakar. If they followed the process, it will never. He is a consummate politician. He is a consummate Democrat. I've met him a couple of times since this thing happened. He has remained his cool, calm, and well comported self. What we are saying is that if we do not address the issue of the process now, saying there was a winner is a very terrible thing. You can't. Chief. All Chief. right, Chief. I know you've seen that video making the rounds about your earlier prediction uh, that uh, uh, Senator Bola Tinubu, it will be difficult for people to beat him because he's built bridges, he's made alliances, and that was way earlier. And now people say that that is what has just played out. Uh, it's very easy to bring out videos and cut the parts that suits your purpose. <laughs> but did they show you where I said that PDP would have to field someone more formidable than Tinubu? And that person is Atiku Abubakar. There is no question about that. So for the next elections coming through now, is your party encouraging supporters to also go out there and get their voices heard and make a point this time? Oh, we are responsible citizens of Nigeria, we will always obey the rule of law. We would encourage our supporters to go out and vote, and vote again overwhelmingly, and hope, hopefully they will be able to defend their votes. We saw what happened in Lagos, where people came out and they couldn't vote till late in the day. The security people were just looking at them. All right.
All right, uh, we have to end at this point. Uh, Chief Dele Momodu is the Director of Strategic Communications of PDP's Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you for coming on and all the best. Sir. Thank you for inviting me. All right, we will be back in just a moment. Do stay with us. All right, welcome back. Mr. Mikey Jaffer joins us, the former director with the state security. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much for well, having me. Well, when people looked at how things panned out with the elections, and then they see uh, some violence, and then on top of that, all the figures we hear about, the amount of security personnel that have been deployed, how they're working together, how they talk tough, that nobody will be allowed an inch of space to prevent anybody from carrying out the, performing their civic responsibility. It raises a lot of questions concerning what really happens or what kind of directive the security agencies do actually have when you see violence in some places. And the thing about that is, no matter how small or large or whatever it is, when it happens at all, it raises questions about security. Do you get the same impression that uh, security didn't perform optimally or how do you think they performed this time? Well, I'll, I'll tell you right away that um, I think sometime last year, late last year, I did an estimate on this, uh, in this studio that there was going to be violence before, during, and uh, after the elections. Well, we had pockets of violence at the pre-election and during the campaigns. Well, incidentally, we didn't have much of the violence during the election. I, I know there was an attack in a Boko Haram, well, one attack again in the southeast, you know, where uh, Imo precise, and uh, Anambra. But the type of uh, violence I expected, I think, were contained by the security agencies. What type was that? Um, you know, all these ballot bus snatching and uh, killings were reduced to the barest minimum. You can never have a perfect situation. And I recall that before the deployment, the Inspector General of Police talked about deployment of 400,000, including the police, the civil defense, and all other associated uh, security forces. And uh, I think, uh, again, I must use this opportunity, because it would have been worse than this, to congratulate Nigerians on their conduct so far. And I want to also appeal that this is sustained mm. and consolidated. But what would you make of the complaints that they made about Lagos, Rivers, Imo, and they thought that there was some violence there, that the CP is there, should be answering more questions concerning what happened? You see. Like I always said, the problem with Nigeria are the politicians. I went to my place, did my accreditation, and voted within two minutes. I didn't have any problem. We didn't have any problem. If you look at Delta State, for instance, there was no much problem. There wasn't any problem, actually. Even though we're trying to confirm one material that came through uh, about uh, they said there were some skirmish, but what confirmed about some said it was Delta State as well. Uh, I can tell you, there's no way you have such magnitude of election without one or two skirmishes. What I'm saying, generally speaking, relatively, it was peaceful in Delta and uh, in some other states. The states were even expecting much problem, like the Southeast. We didn't get that kind of uh, problems we were expecting. So, as I was uh, earlier saying, there's need to congratulate Nigerians on their conduct, no matter the outcome of the, res of, the uh, of the election. I am not, uh, you see, but at times you you don't even draw a line. I am not a politician, but at least we look at issues the way they are. What would have created major security problem emanated from INEC 
for failure of INEC to adhere strictly to the process on what they promised. And uh, you see, Nigerians, we are getting there gradually and steadily that people have not, people, ordinarily people that have gone to the street. But we must commend Nigerians so far. Let us follow the due process of addressing our grievances. Do you think that uh, um, patience and conduct or perhaps maturity of Nigerians is being taken for granted by certain authorities? I don't think so. Um, you know, there was massive deployment because I believe before the results were announced, though that would not have stopped it, there was massive deployment of uh, our troops, the police, to prevent this thing from escalating. But we will still have some pockets of uh, um, protests, which is the right of every Nigerian. But you can see that the protests were not violent. They were peaceful protests. You know, I just wonder what happens in security circles. For instance, when uh, lots of people were asking, I like, why are you not uploading these results? Can you upload the results? It didn't happen in one hour. It didn't happen in 10 hours. It didn't happen in 24 hours. It didn't happen in 27 hours. Much longer. So does security at that point usually reach out to the commission and say, listen, this may have security implications. What is going on? Does it happen at all? INEC is independent National Electoral Commission. We are supposed to be independent, not interfering in their functions of regulation. No, I'm not asking no, to no, interfere. No. The, point, the point I'm making is that yeah. what happened in INEC, I may be right or wrong, I wouldn't attribute it to negligence. I attribute it to a deliberate act. Deliberate. In the sense that if INEC had challenges uploading, which they promised us, if they had challenges uploading, the chairman should have come out to make a statement to say we're having challenges. But nobody, they didn't brief anybody. So that's why I say it's deliberate. And it's quite unfortunate that election that would have been the best since 1993 turned out now to be what we're witnessing. Mm. Mm. I'm just a little curious because you had still given us uh, an assessment of your predictions. You talked about pre-election. You said we did not witness as much violence during yes. the uh, elections, but we're still in the post-era. And as you might imagine, a lot of people are still feeling quite raw uh, from their experience in the elections. And we're still going to go into the governorship elections with mm -hmm. those feelings. So I'd like to know what your predictions will be regarding the post-election era of the presidency, that's in the aftermath, and knowing just how political actors will be also for the governorship elections, what do you think we should be putting in place that is different from what we've done from the governorship, from the presidential for, for elections? For governorship, I think we should have some level of violence in Lagos. You think we will have? Yes. In Lagos, Kaduna, Rivers. These are uh, Kano. These are flash areas. I expect that the security agency should lay more emphasis, concentration. Lagos, of, of Kaduna, people. Kano. La Lagos, Kaduna, Kano, and uh, Rivers. The reasons are obvious. Everybody wants to retain his uh, state. And, uh, you know, with the beavers, they can only go to that place to destroy uh, ballot papers. And uh, once that is done, I need to have the right to cancel the election in that place, the result in that place. So they will do everything <coughs> possible through oppression, suppression of uh, voters, especially in Lagos. You know the stakes are high. More so when the president-elect now is from Lagos and uh, the, most, the, the, the governor there is coming back. And there is this uh, coalition kind of talks mm -hmm. between uh, Labour and uh, PDP. So, but they will still vote for, the, they will still vote for their still candidates. Present. They have separate candidates in different states. So, so coalition they, uh, or if, not? If they have, if they have an understanding, a working understanding, uh, that we should go this way, vote for this party or vote for this. With the social media, it's easy to reach out to the people to say, vote this direction, then at the end of the so, day. What, what, so, and uh, APC on its part, is going to resist it. 
What's your um, advice? Because I heard some people say, look, when INEC didn't upload these results on IREF for people to view, I, I heard them use the word real time several times. So when that didn't happen now, it might have just been an, a, a, uh, an encouragement for this scenario which you highlighted that they, it may just feel that for the violence because states may look at what has happened now and say, okay, if this is the template INEC is going to use again, then we will go to our state and make sure that local government, nobody will take any result from here. We will do what we have to do and then go ahead and upload it. If they're going to upload it. This, this is the time. time. INEC should not, me, should not for any reason repeat what happened in the presidential election. Because politics is local. We're talking of House of Assembly and governorship. Yeah. They must make every arrangement correct ever whatever mistake they had to make sure that the results are uploaded from the unit as promised. If they fail to do that, guarantee for Nigerians to restrain themselves will not be there. There's no guarantee. So INEX should do everything possible between now and the uh, 11th, which is the presidential election, to put their houses in order. Since this will likely have security implications, Will it be out of place if security circles will reach out to the commission and tell them, listen, what's your plan? We advise that you do these things or else you may put us under intense pressure. I believe uh, with the, they, they should be having meetings, security meetings, you know, the ISIS. They should be having meetings involving the INEC, the security agency, because this is quite disturbing. And we don't want a repeat of this. I'm warning that if that is repeated, there's no guarantee of peace in Nigeria if that is repeated, what happened in the presidential election. Hmm. Because even the president and president like they all need a country to govern. Oh, yes. A peaceful country to of govern. Of course, of course. So they, they may just have to do the honorable thing, that's INEC, as you advise INEC them. But, but while we keep attention and while, you know, the IREV is extremely important for transparency, um, uh, you know, the, that was the promise, that it was going to deepen transparency. We've also seen some really, really surprising upsets with the results that came out from the presidential elections, especially with the National Assembly elections. Uh, can we really dismiss that? Because some people will say that if it was capable of producing, with all its flaws, if it was capable of producing those kinds of upsets and even producing newcomers in places like Nasara, for instance, where the Labour Party swept the presidential polls, yet the SDP was able to win some National Assembly seats. Can we really dismiss the entire process as being totally untransparent, even if the IREF did not work? We cannot dismiss it entirely. We can't dismiss it in its entirety because you remember what I said, that this should have been the best election ever conducted in Nigeria, apart from 1993. Now, the problem is, if you go to social media, you see many mutilated figures, which ordinarily should have been transmitted ab initio. Now, with those figures, some from 17 to 217, some from 07 to 207, and all this, about my fear, my fear, the, the, the aggrieved parties should go to court, like they've been challenged by the INEC chairman, which is also provocative. You don't, you should have finished before you say go to court. You know, so it's not, it's not right. So people in leadership position should also know the way they talk. What I expected is that they should have ordinarily get this result uploaded. There wouldn't be any chance for alteration of those results. But the major problem will now be what time will the parties have in the court to tender this bulk of uh, evidence from the unit level to what level and not. So that's my only fear. Otherwise, if they have their results, they, uh, they can go and tender it. But I'm afraid the time might not be there. Well. Yeah, uh, incidentally, the time is not even here for us to even <laughs> continue any further. But we do uh, thank you for coming on this morning. Mike Joffo is former director with the State Security Service. Well, that uh, is the program today. We do sincerely thank you all for your time. Letting us be a part of your day always. We appreciate that a lot.
But we will see you next time. I'm Train Belenuso. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Have a great day. Yes, indeed. Enjoy the rest of your day. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Whatever you do, well, do it good. Goodbye. I'm Karen.